Welcome, science fiction fans. I uh, just been working on a little project that I wanted to clue everyone in on. Uh, let me introduce uh, some of the writing staff: Kim Thompson, hello, uh, Nick Wright, hey, James Panto, hello, and Peter Stolmeyer. Hiya. So, um, maybe you're familiar with the idea of a hollow novel. Maybe not. But um, for those of you that haven't, Peter, you have a yeah, um, a hollow novel is a way of telling a story where you're the center of the narrative, so it is a video game, but it is not, the emphasis is on telling you that story. So there's a lot of real world examples. There's uh, things like Mass Effect and Detroit Become Human and things of that nature. But the, the most famous example and where the name comes from is from Star Trek. Um, when they're in the holodeck, sometimes they have adventures, but sometimes they specifically do hollow novels. Um, Dixon Hill is a good example. Captain Picard loves the old noir stuff. And mm -hmm. sometimes he's just vibing. He's just chilling out in that room. And sometimes he's weaponizing it and having a full action sequence. So what we're trying to do is tell a story um, but have you in the center of that narrative. And we're going to do that with VR. This actually, you talk about this, this story, this is a project that we sort of have worked on. I don't know mm -hmm. for God, close to it, probably a decade mm -hmm. for me. <laughs> it, it goes back even further. Um, it, Way back in the day, in the early 2000s, I was playing a game called Star Trek Bridge Commander, where you were sitting mm -hmm. in the in the bridge of the of the of the ship, and the poster is really funny because it's got an outline of just a captain. It's clearly the bald Patrick Stewart head, uh, but you sit in the middle and you could use voice commands to tell Helm to go places and things mm -hmm. like that. And I always thought, wow, that'd be cool if we could do that with individual people. And I tried it and tried it, but I just didn't have the skills. Um, fast forward like 10 years after that, and a game called Artemis came out. And that mm -hmm. game lets you actually have different computers that control things like Helm and weapons and engineering and the captain sat in the middle. And once that happened, it blew the dust off that project, redid it, built my basement into a spaceship. Well, if I remember, you had actually built your basement into a spaceship mm -hmm. for a previous project. And oh, yeah. uh, you told me about this game. We were at a convention and uh, it was early mm -hmm. on a after I had met you. Told me You told me uh, about the, the idea of this game and that you just wanted to get a group of people together to play it mm -hmm. on, your, on your bridge set basement. And I was like, oh, we could film that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like... <laughs> So that, that was the plan. I, I did have a bridge set for an internet review show that I did. And then uh, the reason I say built it is because I had to make it 360 at that point. So I had to put in a whole ceiling. I'd, we'd, me and my friend Trey painted the ceiling gray, and we added more greebles to the walls, and we made it a full 360 set. And then, yeah, we, we hooked up all the computers, and then we hooked up six cameras. And, uh, and you guys were, were part of that, and we filmed the idea, the premise of this YouTube show was what would happen if you, just an average dude, was in that hot seat as Captain Picard or Captain Kirk or however you wanted to play it. And so it had some Dungeons & Dragons elements and some uh, the computer was running the game and then there was a Game Master making it happen. And again, uh, uh, Trey was a big help with that, helping us with the characters and stuff. And we filmed the whole thing. And immediately after that, uh, I got the opportunity to co-found my previous company and i had the choice to make can i edit all of the all of this footage together or should i focus on learning vr and i i learned vr so the footage is still here eventually i'll finish it you guys but uh it, the project has come back around into virtual reality yeah i think that's exciting yeah i mean the the thing that really excites me about it is that like that project was so much fun and it was uh, so funny to see like this world built and then to see uh, Leo and everyone else on the cast who had no idea what was happening like react to all of it you know in real time and and now we're able to take that same concept you know where we were putting you know Leo in the hot seat and now just put anyone who's playing in that same hot seat mm -hmm. and I find it really fascinating because yes we're Star Trek uh, fans, obviously, but I like how you took this concept and like a choose your own adventure story and then we're creating this vast detailed world that has a history, that has progression, that has little niches of things that you can find if you want to go down those rabbit holes in the story. It's really, really fun. Currently we're using a program called Arcweave and we're kind of individually dividing up our 
sectors of space or different adventures into uh, a lead writer for each place, but we're also kind of hitting the big overall points for how we're going to do this game uh, as a team. And we're doing our writing, uh, writing meetings and getting together on that kind of thing. Um, so Peter, you want to talk a little bit more about the program we're using? Yeah, um, ArcWeave is is neat. There are a bunch of different branching um, programs. I was using a different one for the longest time, but what I like about ArcWeave is that um, it is all completely web-based. So you can just pretty much sign in anywhere, and it has collaborative, so you can see each other's mice, and we can sit there and actually look at each other's work and work on it at the same time and save it to the cloud as well as save it at home. So That's, that's been a really handy mm -hmm. uh, thing about it, yeah. It lets us, uh, you, when we talk about world building, it lets us actually build the cards that have all the world building stuff in it. So it's cross-referenced. So if you're looking at something that, like if Kim's looking at something that James wrote and he mentions um, some new tech, she can click on it and it will give her like the full data that will then eventually end up inside the game because you can do things like scan. You can scan different objects and it will bring up uh, new information about them. So uh, every every uh, piece of the buffalo, we'll, we'll, we'll write it for us and then we'll rewrite it for the game. And the company has been really good about working with us whenever we have, yeah. uh, you know, requests or needs. Yeah. I was just gonna say, as we're kind of some of the early adopters to this kind of thing, so we, you know, we're on there chatting with them. Like, we come across something that we think needs improvement. We're like, hey, what if we could do this? And they're like, oh, okay. And then you know, it might get might get rolled out pretty soon. The other systems that I'm using are very similar to that. They've been very helpful uh, in making the program work. I'm using one called uh, VRIF, which allows me to do things like um, grab stuff, uh, put it into holsters. It lets me teleport around or walk. It lets me. It automatically blocks me when I try to stick my head through walls. It has a built-in save system, that kind of thing. And whenever I have a question, I'm able to join them and ask them. They're, they're able to help me out. And uh, finally, dialogue system. Oh, I'm sorry. Dialogue system is the one with the save. So it's the one that lets me take the ArcWeave stuff and put it into the game, and it will automatically do the branching ca uh, characters for me. Um, it automatically handles the voice acting and things of that nature. And uh, it's got a good state machine and, again, a good save system. So um, sounds, sounds like a lot of time saved. <laughs> yeah. And again, <laughs> Yeah, those guys are available so i'm able to ask them when i have questions and they get back to me on it i think we uh we've got a little bit of the game or you know at least an alpha build that we can show some footage of i think right yeah uh, uh the game is going well which i'm very happy about um basically i was i was like i have a new idea of how to interact when it comes to space adventures and i've had this idea for the longest time and i have wasn't able to implement it until now and i was like well if this doesn't work it's not the whole game's gonna have to be reworked and much to my giddy surprise i've i, I woke uh, my wife up a couple of times dancing around because it was actually working uh basically there's a, there's a thing called the battle grid that shows holograms of everything that's in space and you can just reach out and grab those things and you can interact with them so if you're like approach the ship will actually turn and when you look out the window you'll see it reflecting in what you're doing um that system works wonderfully in VR and for me is completely immersive. I've been able to show it to a lot of people, but anybody I do um, has felt like it's real. So uh, not only are we doing a, a, a cool new Hollow novel, but we actually have a new interface that I can't wait for AAA games to rip off for me and not give me credit for. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and, and the thing that's really exciting too, even about like the early state of, uh, of what uh, we've built so far is how we're, we're constructing every mission to be completable either by staying on the bridge and delegating responsibilities to your crew or by getting your hands dirty and going down to the planet yourself. And the way that the, uh, the teleport you know, feature works to take you from the ship down to the planet is just really amazing. Like I've never yeah. seen anything like it before, and it just works so smoothly. And like I think it'll be a, an incredible like just experience like in the VR world. It works really well for VR, definitely. Mm -hmm. So you're working on this in Vive, mm -hmm. but it should also work on the Quest, right? Right. Well, actually, I, I should say Steam VR, so it, it's going to be like headset agnostic. But I am making this for PC as opposed to Quest. Um, I have made a build that does work in Quest. It works on Quest uh, One and Two already. The the game mechanics are functional, but they have, frankly, I I'm not much of a mobile VR guy. Um, I can make sacrifices, but I kind of don't want to. Uh, mainly, it's about lighting. I want to mm. be able to have the sun of the sector space we're in reflect into the ship 
and have it reflect onto the models. And, and then when the whole ship turns, the uh, the lighting reflects that. And I kind of don't want to give that up. So we're going to make it for PC VR and we'll see how it goes. And if it's popular, it, it can definitely be ported over to Quest already. I just don't want to. But I want what I get from those textures and models. Um, we are trying to tell an immersive story and I want that cable. Um, you can still plug your mobile VR into your PC and if you can't, well, buy the game and then if I sell enough copies, I can port it over to Quest. I, I know it will work. I just don't want to do it. So uh, so should we uh, uh, kind of share the kind of like working title that we have uh, for the yeah. game? <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the name of the ship um, is... is an old name that I've used for a long time, which is Lucidity. And I just think that's a cool name for a ship. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a game called Lucidity. Um, and we're thinking we shouldn't... Right now, we are focused on telling one story. But we shouldn't ignore the fact that this might be a thing people want to know more about. So there could be sequels to it. So we have half a name right now. It is going to be something cool, a Lucidity Hollow Novel. So right now, that's we, we do have an internal name that, that is just gibberish that we're using. Uh, but uh, eventually, it will be called a Lucidity Hollow Novel. And then one of the things in the uh, story will scream that that's what it should be called. So that is, that is standard practice, the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the gibberish name. Uh, you know, the, if you're familiar, the, the short film I made, uh, dragged in right up almost right up until release uh was literally called cheeseburgers well it had um, cats it had, no that's what, i mean it, we knew that i want i knew i wanted a cat pun but i wanted a cat pun that wasn't going to be until you until you watched it and then you go oh it's a cat pun right mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we we filmed some of that in, in my basement as well. We did. And one, <laughs> one of the cool things about that is because we have the previous project and we have dragged in is that I have a, a lot of images I can use for our writing. So we're writing this for ourselves and we don't really need the graphics. But um, yeah, our, our script actually looks really good. It looks like it's a high quality uh, project that we're working on now. Yeah, uh, we that... link, we'll link dragged in below, actually, because that's a highly underrated video in its own right. I agree. <laughs> So I got to say is this time uh, as we're writing and we're using Arcweave and I'm using Commander Carol and his face is my face. So that's kind of like I'm a master of my own destiny in that way. <laughs> <laughs> and I found when writing, being able to see people I know's faces and the the characters that as I'm writing speak with those voices in my head and whether that matches the voice actors will get or not, that still helps them to be real and solid and three dimensional characters in my mind which is easier to type out that is that is the goal we're hoping at the end of this uh, uh you won't just be like i fought klingons on the starboard bow or you'll be like i i made friends along the way the mm -hmm. the real journey was the crew is what we're hoping to achieve <laughs> so um uh is is there like a a projected like deadline for like when we're kind of looking for this game to come out yeah um, the way that I have this set up currently is I do have the ability to work on this game for exactly one year. Uh, after that, uh, new options have to present themselves. So I have a hard deadline no matter what happens is I'm going to release this game um, somewhere around October of 2022. Um, I say that because it could be a little bit sooner, it could be a little bit later, but it has to be released because I have to move on to other things. I am tempted to make a demo. so. The, the, we're taking one of the sectors of space that has been worked on the most. Um, I, I started writing it all the way back in 2017. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're, we're taking that one as a test for ourselves to make sure the game mechanics work so that the script matches. If it's good enough, I might actually release it as early access on Steam. Mm -hmm. uh, that could happen as soon as like three to six months from now. But uh, yeah, it's the whole game, all 13 sectors of space, an ending and credits and everything will be available in October uh, for sure. Even if it's like stick figures by the end of it, that's how it's going to roll. <laughs> now, I, with how much we've made already, I'm very confident in that deadline. Yeah, uh, the game mechanics are working. Um, yes. the, the dialogue system is working. You can, you can talk to somebody on the main viewer or you can go down to where they are and talk to them in person and the system already understands that and lets you just continue a conversation mid-sentence if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm feeling confident as long as we have the content and the voice acting and the graphics and the, no, <laughs> as long as we have all this stuff going and it does seem it does appear to be doing so that we can actually get it done in that time. I mean, I think the the important part was was the the in, the, the back engine mm -hmm. build of the, does the game function and you got that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Now, 
now it's just a matter of, of mm -hmm. filling in the, the details. And... I, I legit do. I am running at uh, 90 frames on Quest and uh, 120 on, on PC at the moment um, with full, full graphics. So uh, we are functioning. Uh, now all we need to do is pour the content into it. So that's yeah, you're right. That's an absolutely critical step. Yeah. So uh, where should uh, everybody uh, uh, look to get more updates as we continue through the development? Well, we kind of need a game name first before I can release the official places. So in the meantime, it's going to be uh, our, so, our personal uh, social so medias. Follow uh, us uh, all on Twitter and just put yeah, our Yeah, follow put us all on Twitter if that's a thing. But put we're getting old, the... Leo. Old people use Twitter. So <laughs> if you're old, I'll put everybody else's uh, 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 ads up there. And you should follow each, each one of us. Um, but if you're looking for like the writing staff, that's who. And if you're looking for the game development, that's me. That's that's where I post up. Um, uh, and eventually, once we have a name for this game, we will have a, a YouTube and a Twitter and an Instagram and all that good stuff. Uh, my wife has already volunteered to be the social media manager, so she'll she'll even cook up the TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just dated us based on how you referred to TikTok. Oh yes. I'm, I, I am officially. We're old. gonna uh, we're gonna have the ticks and the talks. Both of them. We'll have that. We'll have that squeaky voice being like, "I want to be the captain of a ship." It's totally. It's gonna be great. <laughs> and then one of the characters will full floss. <laughs> That's not even how you floss. <laughs> I'm sitting down. I'm sitting are down. They, I gotta. Are they gonna whip or are they gonna name name or both? I gotta bring the hands up. To, never mind. <laughs> I can't do nothing. I, uh, the, no dances for me. Uh, <laughs> I could do the robot. That's it. <laughs> and there will be robots in my game because robots are cool. Robots, are, robots cool. are cool. Well, that 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 was definitely a little peek into how the the writers' room has been throughout the project <laughs> so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do any of you guys want to share um, any of the moments that you're working on that you're you're like I I I can't wait for other people to see it. Uh, yeah, for me, like uh, one of the things that I've always really enjoyed in uh like science fiction stories is when they incorporate uh like you know magical or supernatural or other like non-science friendly concepts uh and so there's actually a scenario that i've already written that is uh, a, a kind of like a almost like a ghost story uh and so i wanted to like have a little bit of like that that horror element uh but also to give you something that was just like genuinely uh, 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 strange and unexplainable that you had to try to unravel and make sense of. Or maybe you're afraid of ghosts and you just don't. <laughs> That's also possible. <laughs> Say, Cam, I don't know how much you want to go into it, but uh, I think you're all going to be intrigued by an area called the Storm. I, I, I definitely have liked um, scattering some breadcrumbs and leaving some mysteries. <laughs> I will say I'm so I'm working on a on a sector of space which is uh, essentially a ship graveyard, uh, and we've had this race that has been mostly you know standoffish, very protective, and they won't talk to you. They'll they'll send little text messages to you. That's all. That's the only way they communicate. But they've they've got a guy out there, and <laughs> he's a watchman. His job is just to sit out there for years and years, and he's going to be ready to talk your ear off. So it's just it's been really fun to inhabit that character and bring him to the table and just have it. Be a, such a stark contrast to what the rest of that that alien race is like. I'm looking forward to that designing that alien race because there's they're supposed to be weird in a way I don't think I don't think we've seen before. That's 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 hyperbolic. Like, but what I mean is like I don't know how I'm going to realize what's in my head into the game. But every time you see one of these guys, you should be like, hold on now, and you should like take time to either look at him or be repulsed by them. Uh, that's that's the goal. We'll see how close we get to it. And I will say the graphics that we have so far have been spot up beautiful. Like, and those are just the preliminary graphics. Yeah, those are the temp ones. Um, uh, right now, the, the Lucidity bridge that I'm using is very shiny and very cool looking. And I'm like, Lucidity isn't like that. It is, um, it is my basement. It is, it is hobbled <laughs> together. Uh, there are crates in which the controls are set upon and I haven't designed that yet. So yeah, things, the, the graphics are looking good and I can't wait to make them look terrible. <laughs> things jump and plugged into places. Yeah. You say look terrible and I, I have high, high hopes for this. Okay, It's, it's, it's going it's, to look beautifully put together. If you if you end up on this bridge and you don't think, I need to call Space Osha, 
because this is not <laughs> compliant. If I have not done that, then I have not achieved my vision. So you I'm have going a there. trip on a wire. <laughs> you, know, that, like... you know, you know, it's not an impossible game mechanic to to do that. All right, so that that seems to be where we're at. Uh, anyone else have any uh, closing thoughts? Um, I just want to say I'm excited with what has where this game has gotten so far, and I'm excited for the updates, and I hope to see you guys all along the way. I'm glad to actually make this, it's, it's really becoming a reality now. We've, we've kind of been living with this, you know, some of us for a long time, some of us for a few years, and uh, seeing it all come together is something that's really special, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just the, the, the collaborative effort that we've all put into this so far has already produced, like, so much exciting stuff. And I just can't wait to see it like fully realized. Uh, yeah, I'm the same way. Obviously, I've been working on this for a long time. I really appreciate it that you guys have uh, have come on board and helped make this thing a reality. And uh, uh, I can't wait to lose sleep as I make this thing actually go from on the script into into the game. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Leo, you didn't give any thoughts yourself. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs>